We decided to do this group endeavour of painting the Titan Arum, the three of us, because when it initially flowered in the glass houses uh, two years ago, we made a perfect painting of the flower as it was fully opened together. And it was a sort of performance piece to try and attract the visitors and distract them whilst they were waiting in the queue to see it. It became quite a feature and people really liked to watch it and we really enjoyed painting it. So when that painting sadly left the botanics, um, it went down to the Shirley Sherwood collection of Kew. We decided, in fact, what we really needed for the botanics here was a series of paintings telling the story of this plant. So the different phases of its uh, journey. The Titan Arum, when it was flowering here, the flower, when it fully opened, was perfect for a day, which was our challenge to paint each stage in a day. So the bud stage was perfect, probably for about 13 hours, and the collapse stage of the flower after it was perfect was, was also about 13 hours. So we decided to set the challenge for ourselves to paint it over that period of time, which is roughly two days for each piece. So we have this kind of energy going through, through the piece. It's not, it's not a perfect, perfect, fine, fine, fine botanical painting at all, because how could you possibly make something um, like that of this size? Um, and actually the size, I should say, isn't life-size this time, but approximately two-thirds of life-size. But it's certainly a huge piece. To make the piece cohesive is quite a challenge. We all have a very different style of working, um, but I think we've adapted our styles actually to one, paint on such a large scale, and two, paint with a certain amount of speed. Um, but the way we manage it is that each person starts off somewhere, and then we kind of rotate, so each person actually paints on top of somebody else's work. And it's perfect, really, because it builds up the layers of paint which is necessary to really make this flower as three-dimensional as it needs to be. It's particularly chunky and succulent with lots of different surfaces. Um, so we all have an opportunity to start something off and then, as I say, work with different techniques onto different parts. And somehow we don't fight about it. <laughs> As we go round each painting, um, working on top of each of the layers of real dense, dense paint in areas, and really capture this very three-dimensional form, which the flower is, it's sort of 365 degrees all the way around the thing, and we're trying to give the illusion of it being very three-dimensional. Combining all our different ways of working, we're using methods such as, first of all, wetting the paper and then washing in colour. You wait for that to dry and then you start that again, usually with a slightly different colour. So you're constantly building up the layers, which is probably the most common method of working with something like this on a scale like this. But we've also got a couple of quirky little things that we're doing trying to create spots um, into the, to the green areas, into the calyx um, and the base of the flower by dipping the brush into the water, a sort of short brush into the water and gently sort of rubbing the surface to lift off the paint. And then we're sort of dabbing it with a tissue um, which gives a lovely kind of circular, lighter shape and revealing a little bit more of the paper from underneath 
which is perfect for these sort of dotty textures, which are not all regular, so it gives a nice opportunity for all of us to have a go at that. And we're also using sponging methods for the spadix, the big yellow spadix, which has a lovely texture. And it's nice to get a bit of shadow in with the, with the sponge. And the other method, with the very long sort of channels of these veins going up, we're actually using lovely kind of swooshing brush marks with lots of water and, and very fine concentrated paint to sort of eke out the sculptural qualities of the long tube, which are actually the back of the veins of the petal. So um, yeah, many methods are, are used with this, with this painting. second time we are doing this so we are a bit experienced with the first one but um, I never worked such a big flower before like that was the like the two years ago we did one and this is the second one we are a bit experienced and what we are doing is uh, lying down the paper on a nice table and big table and a bit uh, could be challenging to reach to the some parts of the painting that we are trying to do so three of us sometimes need to lie down on the table and uh, on top of the painting <laughs> <laughs> yeah we are really getting over with our painting and uh, we love it so much but uh, sometimes it might be challenging you know like lying down standing up and sometimes because in this kind of scale it is really hard to see it, like from outside so when we are working actually on top of it the other friend is going climbing to the stairs and giving us the direction one of us giving the direction the other is paying is it okay the shadow is right are, am i putting it the right way the angle is correct so a bit like you need to see from outside and when you get inside you are more in deep into details and it gets you could be easily get away from the main image I think it's just such a lovely challenge to do this, to, to make this, these pieces of art in one, in one sitting, if you like, over, over six days. And it's, I think it's great to have such a lovely record of the flowering of this plant, which was a big event for, for the botanics and, um, and quite a challenge for the horticulturists to actually get the thing to flower. It's been amazing. And it's lovely that we'll have it as kind of as a scientific record um, for botanics, hopefully forever now. <laughs>